We're looking at day 131 videos for the first part of the class. Here we have a video that's explaining how we get this number 97% of scientists agree on, on the topic. 97% of climate scientists agree. Humans are causing global warming. It's one of the most famous statistics in all of science, that experts, the people who know the most about Earth's climate, agree, almost universally, that humans are warming the planet. Where does this 97% number come from? The most famous source of the 97% agreement comes from a study in 2013 by Australian scientist John Cook. He looked at almost 4,000 scientific papers that made some statement about whether humans were the main cause of climate change, and 97% of those papers agreed with the consensus. To make sure nothing was misinterpreted, he also asked scientists to rate the views of their own papers, and they found the same 97% agreement. It shouldn't surprise you to learn that people have attacked this study, saying its methods were wrong, that it miscounted things. But even if we ignore Cook's study, it turns out lots of other people have looked at this question and found a similar answer. Between 90 and 100% of experts agree that the climate is changing, Earth is getting warmer, and we're responsible for a lot of it. What does it mean to measure consensus? First, you identify the experts. In this case, the experts are thousands of scientists who study climate and publish their work in peer-reviewed journals. Peer review means that every finding that's published is analyzed by people working in the same field, people who really know what they're talking about. It's not flawless. Mistakes occasionally happen, but the system is built to correct those mistakes, and it's by far the best process humans have ever come up with for doing good science. Once we find this group of experts, we analyze their opinion for or against a particular idea. Sometimes this is done by studying what scientists have written in their papers. Other times, scientists are surveyed directly. This can even be done by listening to what scientists say in public. Now, some scientists don't explicitly express an opinion either way. They're not included in the analysis. Consensus is the fraction who support an idea divided by the sum of those who support plus those who reject the idea. All these different methods have ended up with the same conclusion. The people who know the most almost universally agree about what's causing global warming. But if you ask ever Okay, um, one of the things he mentioned here was that some people are um, complaining about the technique of that survey of all the um, scientific journal articles. And one of the reasons why they attack that is, um, think of, um, think of a, a survey of biking. Let's see if we want to find out, do the experts agree that biking is the best, um, the best exercise? And so uh, a person goes out and looks at all the biking magazines, and voila, 99% of the articles in these biking magazines say that biking is a fantastic exercise. Would that be a surprise to you? No, of course not. It's a biking magazine of all, of, of all things, so of course they're going to have a bias towards bikes. So when you look at climate science journals, you have to ask yourself, what is their bias? And do they have one? Um, remember that human beings are responsible for allowing or disallowing, uh, preventing articles from being published in these things. And so just the articles themselves are not a representative of the entire scientific uh, community. That's one of the complaints that people have had about that. Let's look at some other, um, another video here that explains uh, the other side. Ninety-seven percent of climate scientists agree that climate change is real. How many times have you heard that statement? Probably hundreds. It may seem like a compelling and scientific argument against fossil fuels, but it's one of the most illogical, unscientific arguments you can make. To see how, let's use this form of argument for another controversial product, vaccines. An anti-vaccine person approaches you and says, 97% of doctors say that the side effects of vaccines are real. What would you say in response? You'd probably say, yeah, but the benefits far outweigh the side effects. 
By saying that 97% of doctors agree that vaccine side effects are real without mentioning any of the benefits of vaccines, the anti-vaccine activist is trying to get you to look at the potential dangers of vaccines out of context. When fossil fuel opponents say 97% of climate scientists agree that climate change is real, they are doing the same. Yes, using fossil fuels for energy has a side effect, increasing the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. Okay, but what about the upside? In the case of fossil fuel, that upside is enormous. The cheap, plentiful, and reliable energy that makes modern life possible, and at a scale no other energy source can match. So how significant is the side effect? This raises another problem with the statement, 97% of climate scientists agree that climate change is real. It tells us nothing about the meaning or magnitude of climate change, whether it's a mild manageable warming or a runaway catastrophic warming. This is an example of the fallacy of equivocation, using the same term in different contradictory ways. If someone were to say 97% of doctors agree that vaccine side effects are real, what exact vaccine side effects do the doctors agree on? That a certain number of babies will get a rash or that large percentages will get full-blown autism? Precision is key, right? But fossil fuel opponents don't want you to know the precise magnitude of climate change. Because if you did, you wouldn't be scared of climate change, you would be scared of losing the benefits of fossil fuels. For example, listen to how Secretary of State John Kerry manipulates the 97% of scientists line. 97% of climate scientists have confirmed that climate change is happening and that human activity is responsible, he said in a speech in Indonesia in 2014. Later, in the same speech, he claimed that scientists agree that the world as we know it will change and it will change dramatically for the worse. 97% of climate scientists never said any such thing. So what did the 97% actually say? It turns out nothing remotely resembling catastrophic climate change. One of the main studies justifying 97% was done by John Cook, a climate communications fellow for the Global Change Institute in Australia. Here's his own summary of his survey. Cook et al. found that over 97% of papers surveyed endorsed the view that the Earth is warming up and human emissions of greenhouse gases are the main cause. Main cause means over 50%. But the vast majority of papers don't say that human beings are the main cause of recent warming. In fact, one analysis showed that less than 2% of papers actually said that. How did Cook get to 97% then? First, he added papers that explicitly said there was man-made warming, but didn't say how much. Then he added papers that didn't even say there was man-made warming, but he thought it was implied. A scientific researcher has a sacred obligation to accurately report his findings. Cook and researchers like him have failed us, as have the politicians and media figures who have blindly repeated the 97% claim to support their anti-fossil fuel goals. How can we protect ourselves against this kind of manipulation? Whenever someone tells you that scientists agree on something, ask two questions. What exactly do they agree on? And how did they prove it? I'm Alex Epstein, author of The Moral Case for Fossil Fuels for Prager University. Let's fill in some blanks on page 19 of your packet. Mr. Cook did a survey of published papers and determined that 97% of papers that stated a position on global warming agreed that people cause are causing global warming. To get this number, he looked at 4,000 papers in 21 years of journals. Number three, and this is from the second video, the speaker says that statement of 97% agreement does not in indicate exactly what the survey responses are agreeing to. Exa uh, for instance, how much will the warming be? How much of the warming is due to people? There is a wide range of opinions, including, including skeptics that would still agree with this. Another look at the papers. Um, 
of only 2% actually said the people caused most of the warming. So who is right? Mr. Cook says, oh, we, we counted 97%. Another group says, no, we looked at your same papers, we only count 2%. I don't know. I'm not going to spend my time looking at 4,000 papers and being able to tell you guys the exact right number. It's one of the very frustrating things about the topic is that it's virtually impossible to verify a lot of this stuff. Number five, the 97% only refers to published papers, not all actual people. Not the scientists themselves who are working on it, just the scientists who are lucky enough to get their articles published in a paper. There are other problems with the survey that discredits it. You can do a web search for here. We have 1,350 peer-reviewed papers that support skeptic arguments. Okay, that's the end of that.